Hi friends, my name is Brooklyn Lindsay and this is Linda Moon and you're watching the Grow Curriculum Deep Dive for the Fall Discipleship and Event Volume 7. For the next few minutes, we're going to just give you a big picture overview of what you can expect with both of these resources and also we're going to take an in-depth look at some of the specifics, some things that we just don't want you to miss. And if you're a Grow user, you know that these deep dives are created to give you a head start and help you plan and prepare because, you know, kids ministry leaders, I know we love to be prepared. Um, but even if you're not a Grow user, we're just glad you're here and we think it's cool that you want to hang out with us. So feel free to steal any of these ideas that are appealing to you and make them work for your ministry. So what we're going to do is first we're going to give you an overview of the discipleship activity and then we'll follow that up with some tips and then we'll look at the overview of the event and then we'll give you some fun tips about how to make that even more awesome as well take a look at the get to know you card game which is your discipleship activity for the fall quarter the grow discipleship strategy is based on four spiritual habits and those are spend time with god spend time with others use your gifts and share your story and if you've been using Grow for a while, you know that we dedicate the fall quarter to spending time with others and developing that gift. Um, because kids are going back to school, they're learning about new relationships, um, they want to make meaningful connections with the people that they're spending time with. This is a great time to be thinking about that and using this discipleship resource um, to help. So Linda, tell us a little bit more about how this discipleship activity works to help kids spend time with others. Yes, I am also super excited about this because I love board games and card games, as do most kids and as do most grownups. So we think that gamifying this discipleship activity like this will really help kids get to know each other, you know, hence the name, the get to know you card game. <laughs> yeah. And not even realize that that's what they're doing, but they are spending time with each other, making deeper connections and establishing common ground. Um, after all, it is easier to develop relationships with others the more you know about them. So this would be a great tool for grownups too, but let's start with the kids because that's why we're here. Um, so how to play. It's super simple. This game is set up pretty much like any card game, like apples to apples. And we actually provide the cards for you that you can just print out. Um, and you can play with as many people as you like, but usually this kind of game works best with maybe like six to eight people per set of cards. Um, so we suggest in the instructions to pass out three to five cards to each player. And then you choose one person to kind of be the spotlight person. And so everyone picks from their hand one card that they think the person in the spotlight would like the best. And then the spotlight person collects all the cards face down so we don't really know who submitted them. And then they can talk about which of those cards they like best, which ones they don't like so much, and they can just share a little bit more. Um, and then if you want to keep score, because some kids are a little bit more competitive, um, you can award the point to the card that the person picked. It's really simple. Um, we also do suggest a challenge mode where if you don't want to just talk about what we like and and dislike. Um, we provide a few challenge cards that have prompts that are more like fill in the blank, kind of like cards against humanity. And then they fill in the blank with the cards that are given. Um, and yeah, so let's try one Brooklyn because we're here. We don't have the deck with us, but we can kind of do this um, just mentally. Uh, so one of okay. the challenge questions says, I want to live in a house made of blank. So let's say the cards in your hand were donuts, hot sauce, spider webs, homework, or socks. What do you think I would choose? As tempting as spider webs are, um, <laughs> I would choose definitely a donut. And it'd be in France. Okay. Um, and this is your yeah, answer wait, for wait. me? <laughs> wait, is it supposed to be... Your answer for you? Yes, yes, yes. So this is how we're playing. So the cards that you choose okay, okay. has to describe the person and I'm the person in the spotlight right now. Yeah. Yeah. I think <laughs> I think it would be a donut in France. Okay. That's awesome. Why a donut? In Have France? you well <laughs> because donuts are so pretty and yummy. <laughs> Not that you're yummy, but <laughs> they're enjoyable. Yummy. They're enjoyable. And, you know, I think France, I've never been there, but it's very interesting. And 
beautiful and all the things. Have you ever um, heard of French donuts? I have not. I think the closest was a cronut, right? The croissant and donut combo. <laughs> <laughs> no, they're the beignet of my existence. Oh, okay. That sounds great. <laughs> I would love to live in a house made of French donuts. So great answer. Definitely yes, not spider webs. Thank you for staying away from that one. <laughs> I think that you would be a donut, though, because hot sauce, I mean, you could tolerate that because you are really good at eating spicy things and it doesn't seem to hurt you at all. So you could tolerate a hot sauce house. But I probably but... wouldn't be able to invite anyone over. No, nope, everybody <laughs> would just keel over and pass out. Yes. And socks stink. And I don't think that's like your vibe. So and homework is just kind of like flimsy it would fly away it could get ruined so I think donuts the most stable and enjoyable environment okay you. I love it I'm imagining <laughs> the Luigi's Casa de la Tires from Cars like the donuts Ooh. it's like that I think that'd be a fun house <laughs> that's perfect I'm so excited we're gonna have a French donut house someday okay so friends see how <laughs> involved and deep we got just with this one silly question and we think your kids are just gonna have a lot of fun with that it's gonna end up being hilarious and make sure you get your leaders involved because you know your leaders love to be goofy I'm sure um but the thing is it doesn't end with the card game the activity extends beyond that and um, we include a discussion component which we think is kind of the main point of this it's like okay we had some fun but we want to talk about what do we learn about each other and what do we just do in spending time with each other so we prepared a few questions you can use to kind of debrief with the group so we asked things like what is something new you learned about someone in the group what surprised you did you learn anything about someone that you want to know more about and more questions just like that. And we even included a reflection time worksheet that kids can fill out if you don't want to do this in a group setting and share out loud. So we think this is going to be a wonderful and super fun resource for you. So I hope you all check it out and do it this fall. Yes, it's going to be so fun. And I was a real life case study because most kids who you ask to do this game are going to put themselves in the center right. of this question. It's what I would pick. I did. We're like, no, no, no. It's what they would pick. Yeah. And Linda did a really good job of saying, wait, is this what you want or is this what I would want? Apparently we and want the same thing. So that's great. We're establishing <laughs> common ground. <laughs> yeah. Because, you know, like, I obviously think like a child as well. So <laughs> this was a perfect time to test it, perfect person to test it with. But truly, like, I love this game. I love when kids start imagining worlds and they put you in them and they have these reasons. And it will be very fun for you to hear their reasons. Absolutely. And it will surprise you, like, what they think of. And it might give you a little bit of a glimpse into their world and, like, things that they love. Mm -hmm. Because oftentimes they're going to choose what they love. Right. You know, they're going to choose things that are familiar to them or they're excited about. So the get to know you part is really like the basis of this whole game. And sometimes we don't always have that opportunity to get to know the kids that are really, you know, um, you know, in, as they're coming and going and getting checked in and doing different activities, we might not have that moment to learn that they're really obsessed with Silly Putty or yeah. they just really, really love France. It's just funny. <laughs> they just do. And they want everyone to live there and they do. They want everyone and themselves to be there. So, yeah, yeah definitely yeah. use this resource. And um, I'm glad like we had a chance to just kind of play it out a little bit. That was really fun. Um, so, okay, now that you know what this is all about, um, let's give you a few tips on how to make the best use of this resource. Number one, have kids make their own cards. Um, you can use the template that we have. We provided one for you um, to have each kid write or draw their own items on blank cards. So you can add different, like, unique cards to the deck so that you have more options um, so that they can be more custom to your group. Um, it just gives it a little bit more of a personal touch. Um, and you can also, this is really cool for those of you who know how to do this, um, or if you don't know how to do this, just ask a child to help you do this. <laughs> um, you can edit these digitally using the PSD file that we provide. So everything that we give you in this card game is fully editable and customizable for you. And all you have to do is just, you know, download that um, from the expansion pack. <laughs> yeah, go ahead and make your own expansion packs. And that'll be really fun because <laughs> then you can just keep building to your deck 
year to year. And so you can actually get a lot of mileage out of this activity. I love that. Uh, tip number two is make sets for families. Uh, you can print the cards out in whatever way that is most resourceful for you and your ministry. Uh, we suggest doing it in one of three ways. Um, one, you can just print them double-sided on cardstock paper and cut them out. Color if you can, but no biggie if it's not in color. Um, you can also print them double-sided on perforated label templates. I think we provide a label number. I think it's going to be Avery template that you can use and you don't have to like manually cut them. You can just, they're all perforated and just ready to go. Or you can print them out professionally using a custom business card company like Vistaprint or Moo and you get like really nice cards and then you can get like, if you want to keep them around for a while, that might be the way to go. But however you decide to do it, it might be a nice touch to provide a set for kids to take home and they can play with their families and friends. And I think it'd be a great way for them to make memories with the kids in your ministry and also outside as well. Yeah, the get to know you card game. I love it so much. Yay. It was super fun getting to make this and to imagine it being used in different places. I think your expansion pack ideas are really going to take it to the next level because you know your group the best and you can have so much fun like adding your own ideas to it. I'm really excited to see where this goes with all of your creativity. Um, that is, it's going to be really great. All right. Now Yay. that we've gone over discipleship resource, um, do you want to talk about uh, the super fun event that we have lined up for the quarter, Linda? Do you want to do that? You know it. Let's do it. In addition to doing a discipleship activity that's aligned with one of our four spiritual habits, we also provide a just for fun event that you can roll out in your ministry for outreach and fellowship purposes. Um, this year, Grow Kids is kicking off, and you're going to get this in a minute, uh, with a super fun event called Let's Kick It. Yay. Yes. <laughs> so exciting. Kids and families can kick it. Um, literally playing all sorts of kicking related games. And here are a few examples. Um, we've got stations planned called Tricks Kicks, like trick shots, but not. So there's that. Um, skip it, kick tac toe. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Even a hacky sack station, bringing it back, bringing those hacky sacks back to the ministry, um, and so much more. Linda, what else do we have planned for everyone with Let's Kick It? I am so excited about Let's Kick It. And this is coming from someone who has very little athletic ability. So kicking is a little hard for me. Like hacky sacks, I don't think I could get more than one. <laughs> but this is cool because uh, no athletic skills required because these are going to be more like carnival booths. Um, and it's a great time to do this kind of event. I know a lot of churches do fall festivals and Halloween alternative events. So you might want to try out Let's Kick It in your ministry this year. Um, in the resource folders, uh, we provide instructions, materials, lists, and descriptions of five station-based games and three all-play games that you can have happening all at the same time, or you can kind of have schedules for the group to go through together. Totally up to you. Um, so the first thing you want to do is you want to determine a venue. Um, a gym would be great, a large multi-purpose room, or even a cordoned off section of your parking lot would work great. And you could also get creative. And if you don't have a space where you can have all these booths in the same place at the same time, you can have kids travel door to door using different classrooms. I did that in my previous church because we didn't have a space like that. And it was great because it was kind of like going trick or treating, except you go and play some games and you win stuff. So that's really fun. Of the eight suggested activities, don't feel like you have to do all of them. I know sometimes when they're all written out for you, you feel like I have to do this and I can't. Um, whatever you want to do, focus on the ones that you want to do. And as long as you're having fun, the leaders are having fun, your kids are going to have fun too. So just feel free also to add stuff to the mix. You know, you can come up with even more creative games because you all are super creative. Um, so you can just max it out however you'd like. And I know your kids are just going to have a blast. So in your events folder, we also included resources like more detailed guidelines on how to plan and run events, suggested schedules and volunteer roles, everything you need to get yourself started planning for this. Yeah, it's so cool. Um, just like a few little extra ideas. Um, if you wanted to kind of add a little bit of 
community building to this. You could invite different schools to come dressed in their school spirit, or you could create fun like teams, like using colors. Like maybe you get the same color socks for different groups of people. Mm -hmm. um, and just have like little kick it wars that would be fun and not like, um, you know, hurting anyone, obviously not <laughs> actually wars. Not but actually more, kicking others. No, 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 not, no kicking wars, guys. <laughs> Which, I mean, that happens every week, right? <laughs> yeah, we're going to see who can kick it together the best. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I think it would be fun if you did want to kind of create some, uh, you know, community. And many of us have multiple elementary schools, multiple preschools, multiple schools all over the place. There's so many options for schools now. And I think one of the things that's really nice to do is bring those schools together for a fun, like, kind of like a, um, a takeover, but more like you're inviting them all to participate as a group. And yeah. then you can mix up the groups to help them get to know each other. So I'm there kind of go. into the discipleship activity, the get to know you thing. Maybe we could, you know, kind of focus on a little bit of getting to know you by mixing the teams up. There so you go. could do adults versus kids, you could do schools versus schools, and then you can mix them all and make them do some of these stations like in mixed groups. So that's my little added bonus suggestion. And Linda's got some ideas on how to make this event even more awesome. So let's do that. Okay, tip number one is to recruit volunteers early. I know that sounds super logical and obvious, but a lot of times we hesitate to ask for help because, um, you know, you want to be kind to the members of your church and not ask them for help all the time. But you're actually being kind when you ask them early and you let them know what it is you need and when, and you're really specific about how they can be involved because sometimes people don't help because they don't know how to. Um, and also don't neglect those youth group kids. Um, some of whom might feel like they're too old to participate, but they might be down to run some of the activities or booths, or they could buddy up with some of the younger ones and take them from station to station. I know a lot of the older kids enjoy doing that and have little kids like look up to them and, you know, helping them out with little things here and there, carrying their candy for them. I don't know. Um, so make sure you reach out to everyone who can help you and reach out to them early. I really like that idea of uh, utilizing the older kids. I think that's something that all of us, you know, are we're in that tension of that fifth grade year where they're trying to figure out how do I like fit in here. Yeah. So and they're kind of looking forward to older group. So this gives them a little bit more autonomy. And I really like that. That's great. All right. Well, we have another tip for you. Um, our second tip is dressing up. Um, as we mentioned earlier, a lot of you are going to be doing this event in the fall, and you may want to replace your Halloween festivities with this event. Um, so you can use this as an opportunity for kids to dress up if you want. Um, if you're doing the school spirit thing or doing some other kind of team thing, then you may want to ask people to dress a certain way, or you can just have fun with it, like having everyone dress up however they want. Um, you can go with a sports theme. They can come in jerseys. They can come in track suits. They can come in inflatable things. I love inflatable costumes. Those are the best. I once told our youth group like to come in inflatable costumes. Like That was the only requirement, and we had so much fun. Um, it was very funny. Everybody bumping around and <laughs> I can imagine trying to kick like these things in a T-Rex costume. Can you imagine? <laughs> like, just like, <laughs> oh my gosh. That, yeah. that, that needs to be something your leaders do for sure and entertain the yeah. children. Yeah, for sure. Like <laughs> let's kick it. But then you come in a costume that, can't, like, that doesn't allow you to kick anything. <laughs> yes. I think that's great. You should do yeah. it. Somebody do, do it. it. Steal Someone. it. Go for it. Um, yeah. So anyway, or you could just do no theme at all. You just have people come, no pressure. You know, it's always tough in the fall when everything's happening all at once, all of the new school acclimation, you've got to figure all these things out, your schedules. It might just be great to come to a, a church event that you don't have to prepare for at all. So if you don't want to do a theme, that's cool too. 
Absolutely. Um, and tip number three, you've heard us say it a few times, but encourage grownups to play. A lot of times at a kid's event, and I know as a kid's director, I see this happening all the time, but kids go play and do their thing. And the grownups kind of just sit around and wait for the kids to be done. And not only is it not yeah. fun, but it also pressures kids to be like, oh, let me just get through this real quick so I can go home because I can tell my parents don't want to be here. So instead of like forced mingling where like parents have to kind of like sit around and drink coffee while the kids are doing their thing, encourage the parents and other adults in your ministry to come and join in on the fun. So make it like an all church event. Um, and it'll create more buzz because you're like, no, just sitting around aloud. You have to go play. And nothing is more satisfying to a kid than to beat an old person at a game. And, you know, you get to- <laughs> and old in their minds is like 20. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> Yeah, so let the kids just beat you at these games and just be goofy and silly and have a lot of fun. And when everyone's playing together like that, that'll just create just a nice vibe for everyone and it'll be super fun. So make sure you do that. That's such a good tip. I was just talking a few minutes ago to the Bible is Funny Guys about comedy and like how it's useful in ministry. Mm -hmm. And we were trying to think about the different ways that it creates like safety. And I was just thinking comedy really is compassion. Mm -hmm. It's like a way to kind of suffer with others in your mortification when you do something that's like, <laughs> like you kick it and miss it like that. There's nothing worse <laughs> or more mortifying than like trying to kick something and not even making contact. Yeah. And I think when we do that, we create this very hospitable space for kids yeah. to be like, you know what, you can mess up too and you don't have to have it all together. Absolutely. And I'm just here. Yeah. So I really love that. And I hope that all the grownups out there will try all the trick kicks and the hacky sack tricks yes, and all the stuff. For sure. it's super fun and humiliating. And hopefully someone's videoing. Yes, that's, what we want. <laughs> um, yeah, that's what we want. Everybody upload your videos. <laughs> Just kidding. Yes, but um, we're not kidding. We do want to see what we're doing. Not. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I wanted to say next. So, um, you know, that's basically it, everyone. This is what we've got for the fall discipleship and events, two really incredible things you can do. One that will help spiritually form a kid and help them get to know others and really spend time with them. And one that's just super fun that can build community and also confidence. So we hope that you'll try these out. Um, and don't forget, if you do, tag us in your photos on Instagram. Um, we're at stuff you can use if you are on Instagram or just post them in the Facebook group. Um, just search stuff you can use a children's ministry community. I'm also going live in there occasionally, so you can kind of hang out if you ever want to just talk and chat. Yeah, we would love for make you to sure do, that. You do that. It's super fun and kind of on like the cuff. So <laughs> if you can just know anything could happen. But we really love getting to see what you do with these resources. And we're so glad that you're out there doing the thing you love and helping kids grow. So thanks for joining us today.